Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse number 16. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 16. When you have that, I'm going to ask you to stand. I will not do a, a lot of exhaustive reading, just a very short reading. And so even if you have weakness in your legs and knees, I'm going to ask you if you can just stand with me. And I promise you, you won't be standing long. Second Chronicles chapter 20. What verse did I give you? 16. Verse number 16. I need your assistance to help me read the scripture tonight. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 16. Let's read. Oh, okay. Let's, oh, we need to screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> Some of y'all was faking, acting like y'all had it in your Bibles. You did. It's all right. So, <laughs> This is a new year. Come on. We're going to start off honest. All right. Come on. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 16. Let us read uh, with strength. Let's read now. Read tomorrow. All right. You can be seated. That's all I needed you to read tonight. <laughs> I need you to scream at somebody on your way to your seat and tell them God said tomorrow. Ask him, did you hear what I said? Tell him, I got a word from the Lord. Tell him your word. Tell him your word. Tell him your word. Tomorrow. If God said tomorrow, that means you can't die in your today. All right. All right. Y'all be seated. All right. Remind the people in your section, tell them that word is for everybody over here. Tell them it's coming down this road tonight. Tell them don't you block the flow, don't block the flow. If you don't want it, go sit on the balcony, but it's going to happen for everybody on this, on this road. I want to, I'm going to say this. During this time of year, this is when, uh, the prophets or prophetic voices usually come together or not come together uh, and begin to release what they believe the word of the Lord is or God's heart toward his people or to nations or for the upcoming season. You now, for many of us, uh, uh, based upon our Judeo-Christian faith, we often uh, celebrate the new year according to the Hebrew calendar. And so according to the Hebrew calendar, this year is not 2024 as much as it's 5784. Still dealing with fours, right? And the imagery of 5784 with Hebrew lettering gives us the picture of a door. And it's the reason why uh, many prophetic voices or Bible scholars have lifted that this is the year of the door. But often when they say it's the year of the door, many have made an emphasis that it's an open door. And I do believe that we're in a season of open door or open opportunities. 
Uh, but when I look a little closer in observation and examination, it seems like the door actually is closed. Now, that doesn't uh, give for a good praise break because people who have a lack of revelation, they don't know really when they should praise. Those who don't have revelation, they wait for sunlight before they worship. But we who have revelation realizes that new day doesn't start at sunrise. Hallelujah. Sabbath starts at sunset. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, it may be dark outside. I tell him, but I just crossed over into a new day. I'm just waiting for the elements to catch up with what God has already declared. And so we're, we're going we're gonna to hear prophetic words and prophetic utterances. And oftentimes during this time, we're going to hear a, um, a plethora or diversified uh, presentation of what God is saying. And, and oftentimes when we hear that, it begins to bother some of us to make us wonder, well, who's right, right? Uh, that's why the Bible lets us know that the prophetic is open to human error. It really is. And I'm going to tell you why. Because we're humans. <laughs> the Bible says in the New Testament, Pauline epistle instructs, instructs us that we should sit in companies of prophets when we prophesy. Prophesy about company two or three. So not when one prophesy the other two fall out. One prophesy and the other two judge. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, you can miss God. Miss God. Now, how many have missed God before? Come on, y'all, don't leave me. I mean, you just knew it was God, right? Uh, you, you knew it was God, but we, we, we deceived ourselves. It's not that we were trying to be manipulative or deceptful, deception, but there are things even in us that oftentimes causes us to hear it the way we want to hear it. And this is why if you're going to do anything in this hour, don't be connected with ministry just through the lens of a camera. We, we need community. Uh, we, I, I, know y'all, I know that was going to be kind of weak because many of us want to say, as long as I got Jesus, I'm good. But as you walk this thing out, you're going to realize you need Jesus in somebody. And I know... You don't need no preacher, but the Bible asks the question, how can you even hear without a preacher? And how can they preach lest they be sent? Samuel knows the voice of God because the voice of God sounds like the voice of Eli. I discussed that at another time with you. And many don't have an Eli so their ear can be tuned to hear the voice of God. And so we're going to hear different things. And I don't believe just because somebody says open door and somebody says closed door that somebody has to be wrong. The Jewish sages said this, that the word of God is like the prism of a jewel that depend on where you're standing, you'll see another side of him. Hallelujah. Like you've never seen before. It depends on where you're standing. If you're standing in the old covenant and looking toward Jesus, you'll see him differently than standing in the new covenant looking back at Yahweh of the old covenant. It, it, it doesn't mean that the way you painted him is wrong. It's just limited based upon where you're standing. And so we're going to hear a diversity of words and language about this is our year. This is our hour because it sounds good. Every year is our year, right? <laughs> But eternal God is not limited to time. As a matter of fact, he did not need the calendar to flip before he decided what he was going to do. I need you to look at somebody and tell them it's in the eternal, but it's about to be dropped down into time. See, see when you get that revelation, you'll stop feeling like you're working against the clock. Hallelujah. How come to tell somebody that will receive it? Time is really on your side. God is going to use time as a vehicle to bring to you what he declared. I come to speak to somebody that around the second week of March, that week is going to be declared and it came to pass. My, 
I declare about 50 of you that will praise him. You're getting ready to experience the telos of your faith. Well, God going to start changing your prayer request because you're going to say that that I had prayed for is already done. I need somebody in this room that believe you about to touch what God said to open up your mouth like a trumpet and praise him like you got it in your hand right now. Oh, God. And so I, I believe, I believe in these prophetic utterances, these words of knowledge. But as we come into this new season and this new hour, something that I feel we're beginning to lack in the prophetic is prophetic utterances concerning eschatology. So, Bishop Loma, you said something tonight that I failed to hear as I've been traveling. You mentioned the word of the Lord to nations because for some reason, we have limited the voice of God to the vacuum of our own world. Not our geography, our demography, the demographics of our small cluster. But what God is doing and what he's about to unveil is bigger than your house. That's why I have an issue of people who call themselves called to the nations without a passport. You don't even pray for the nations. All you pray for is your rent payment and your car payment. Until your prayer language shifts, your feet will never go there. My God. Hallelujah. If you can't move your feet, at least you can change your language. I need you to push somebody to tell me, elevate your prayer life. It's eschatology. The study of the last days. Now I understand what happened is when we who grew up in the classical Pentecostal church, it was all about Jesus' coming. It was, all, it was all about reading signs. Do y'all remember the Gulf War? Do y'all remember the situations that would cause us to pack out a church? Do y'all remember watch night service of 1999? Do you remember? Everybody came to church just in case, right? <laughs> we left our tubs full of water and jugs of water because we were preparing for the coming of the Lord. And maybe in some ways, I hope I'm not boring y'all with this. I promise I won't be long. I'm not going to be long. And maybe in some ways, we were guilty of being like the men that Paul had to address that was sitting on mountaintops, not working, waiting for Jesus to come. Maybe it caused us not to be involved in our communities, not to engage civically or in outreach because we were waiting for Jesus to come. And so then we shifted to this kingdom model where we begin to declare that the kingdom of God is at hand. And it's not about going there, it's about bringing the kingdom here. And so we went from one extreme sometime, I believe, to the opposite extreme. To now, not only are we not looking for the manifestation of Yeshua in the earth, we don't want it. We, don't, we live like we, not, we don't want it. We, we operate. We have become, in our church culture, Greco-hedonistic. We become carnal in our praise, carnal in our teaching. And I know to say carnal in, in, in the sphere of declaring something spiritual sounds like a contradiction. So let me explain to you what I'm talking about. There, is, there are times even in our worship encounters that people can't praise without a promise. People can't give without a promise. But mature believers know that the telos of our faith is not just a house is coming. It's that the Lord himself, my God, that, the, that he's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. And that blessing is not a car. He is the blessing that he poured out. And this is why we've got to encourage people 
from Sunday to Wednesday, from Wednesday to Sunday, to convince them to serve in the place they say they love is because we have this appetite of carnality that we're trying to fulfill with church hype. Uh, and what happens? We end up so desensitized doing ministry on autopilot that we have missed out on the brewing of the enemy. What's luring in darkness? Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. So, so what's happening in this hour with us? What's, what's, what's happening? What's, what's happening in the realm of the spirit? Glory be to God. We used to preach about the Antichrist. We don't talk about the Antichrist anymore. According to some conservative Christians, uh, hyper-conservative Christians, that Barack Obama was supposed to be the Antichrist. Saddam Hussein was supposed to be the Antichrist. I want to live to you that before the Antichrist would be embodied in an individual, according to the scripture, the spirit of the Antichrist would already be in the earth. Uh, and I'm not here to debate with vax, anti-vax culture. I'm not going to debate that. But I do want to live to all of you who had a strong anti-vaccination posture because of the fear of the Antichrist. I want to lift to you that you're already operating in the system of the Antichrist, whether you know it or not. We got credit cards and debit cards. Oh, we got fingerprints on this and fingerprints on that. You can't buy and sell without a social security number. But before, before the Antichrist will be revealed as a person, the stage and the infrastructure would already be set up. What is the Antichrist? Antichrist, Christ, the anointed, is the spirit that operates against the anointing. Oh, my God. That's why I got stirred up when Bishop had us pray praying over each other's back tonight. I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor the enemy is not after your looks. He's not after your money. He wants to rob you of your anointing. There is an assault that's going out against the anointing. But I need you to scream at somebody tell them, I got you covered. I, I got you covered tonight. The spirit of the Antichrist is going out in the land with a character assassination. And some of y'all are sharing and encouraging the world as they assault our leaders and assault our believers. But I want to lift to you that the devil is not after the messenger. He's after the message. If he can discredit the messengers, he will discredit the message. Because 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 says if you believe God, you will be established. But if you believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. The enemy is after the prosperity of the saints. I need you to run over to somebody and tell them I'm going to cover my prophet. You can say what you want to say about anything, any politician, huh? but don't you put my prophet's name in your mouth huh? unless you bless it. Whatever you think you heard, whatever you think you know, God used the prophet huh, to call me out of darkness. Huh? God used the prophet to set suicidal ideations on me and rebuke the spirit of suicide off of God used the prophet to lay hands on, y'all not talking to me here, to lay hands on me and push back the spirit of of infirmity. I need about a hundred of you. If you know the prosperity of your life is connected to the voice of your prophet, I want you to open up your mouth and shout for the one huh, that God raised up. Some of you almost walked away from the church, but God used the prophet. I want you to tell somebody, tell them my prosperity. <laughs> Is connected to the voice of my prophet. Oh, uh, y'all see, see, y'all call, y'all think that's idolatry. See, you know, no, y'all went to, y'all went on the Renaissance tour, and you bought that ticket for the Renaissance tour. But when I start talking about my prophet, you get a little tight, you get a little squirmish. Yeah, I know what you heard about that preacher and that preacher over there. But the Bible says, "No them that labor among you." And I thank God that God used a man of God.
God to cover me, my God, when I could have been left exposed to the vices of the enemy. I'm so glad when I was like Eutychus and I had fallen from a high place and people got ready to bury me, God used a pulp that said, don't bury him. There's life, hallelujah, still in him. Lay hands on somebody's shoulder and tell them there's life still in you. Y'all be seated. I, my introduction is just long. I'm not going to be long. What is, what is the spirit of Antichrist? That's why you better, you, you better be alert. You better be sober. Because the Bible says, Daniel chapter 7, verse 25. says, when the spirit of Antichrist come, the first thing he's going to do, he's going to start speaking against. He's going to start speaking against. And then the latter part of verse 25 says, and he will attempt to wear out the saints. Now, I'm looking at the fact that when I grew up, we had prayer on Monday nights. We had Bible study on Wednesdays. We would have a prayer service on Friday night. We had choir rehearsal on Saturday and we'll have Saturday night services, Sunday morning service, eat in the church basement, chicken legs and a piece of bread or a hot dog and aluminum foil and an off-brand soda. Y'all not saying nothing. And then go back at three o'clock for another service. I'm trying to figure out when we only have in church once a week, how are you all churched out? You don't even show up all the time. How are you churched out? You better expose that it ain't the church wearing you out. It's pornography to four o'clock in the morning is what's wearing you out. It's watching a whole Netflix series in one night and still going to work. And then you got stuff you need to do at home so you can't come to church tonight. That's what's wearing you out. You blaming the church. You had a whole pandemic where some of you sat at home for two years. Well, wear out the saints. And I'm going to tell y'all what's wearing some of us out. Good intentions. No, good intentions. Oh, no, no. Stop affirming yourself by rescuing people of trauma. Some of you need people to be drowning just so your value of a lifeguard can be affirmed. But a, the success of a good lifeguard is that I was at the pool all day and nothing happened. I don't need to be needed so bad that I got to keep people around me sick and bound just so I can get them delivered every week. No, 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 no. That's toxic relationships. Scream at somebody, tell them, I want you to be well. I don't want you borrowing from me for the rest of your life. I don't need to have to encourage you for the come I want you well. This is why I want to tell some of you in this room, stop following your heart. Stop, that sounds good on a mahogany card. That sounds good on a hallmark card. Follow your heart. That's a trick of the enemy. I need about 15 people to be honest with me here. The rest of y'all just act bougie and act like you don't know what I'm talking about. But how many of y'all, your heart got you into some stuff that set you back five years? Some of us are still recovering from being led by our heart. Do not be led by your heart. Be led by the Holy Ghost. Because well, you just well, you just got a good heart. You can't help it. No, your heart is wicked. Your heart is deceitful. Your heart is manipulative. Your heart will trick you. Because people are coming to your life saying all the right stuff. That's why I told I told somebody was praying, saying, I'm praying for you because I really want you to fall in love. I said I rebuke that. I said, no, I don't want you to have, uh -uh. I said, don't, don't, don't speak no curse over me. I said, I'm still recovering from falling in love. 
the next decision I make, I'm going to stand up in it. I'm going to count the cost. Come on. I need to know. I, 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 need, I need more than your cute looks. I want to know, can you pray me through? I want to know, how are you with finances? Am I going to make money and you just spend money? I need to know, how. I need to know, are you secure about yourself? Or am I going to have to massage you every day to let you know you're the only one? Scream up, scream at somebody, tell them, stand up in the next one. Somebody join your church this week, you don't make them an armor bearer next week. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. I got to discern your spirit. I got to know who sent you and what agenda did you come with. The Bible says you got to know them by the fruit they bear. And sometimes it takes more than one season to see what they're going to produce. Because people will attach themselves to you and you will find yourself depleted to something that used to give you strength. Now you're being exhausted in it. It's the trick of the enemy. Where he's coming in trying to wear out the anointed. And some of you, that's why we got to have discernment. Because some of us, our discernment is being sedated by compliments. You got to be very careful with people coming into your life. And oh, you so what? No, I need. Oh, you so cute. Uh, you so yeah, you, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, you, got, you got to be able to listen to all the noise. And I, I, I'm not telling you to be schizophrenic. I'm telling you to be sober in this hour. Because that serpent spirit, uh, that Leviathan spirit, uh, come on, that serpent spirit will kill you by embracing you. They'll wrap themselves around you, separate you from other trusted voices in your life. People who've been with you for years, who've proven themselves that all of a sudden they will have you looking at other people differently. They will lure you out of the group. They'll lure you out of the church. that cause you to look at your pastor strange. that cause you to look at your family strange. And by the time you look up, you've been choked to death. Killed by embrace. People can say the right thing with the wrong motives. Oh, you man of God, you showing us the way to salvation. You man of God, you showing us. Y'all better listen to him. He's showing us the way to salvation. The apostle turns around and says, come out of her, demon. I was just trying to help. I was just trying to help. I, I don't, I, the Holy Ghost got me saying this tonight. I was just trying to help. And some of you, I, the Lord want me to tell you, because some of you feel like you need a manifestation before you make a decision. My God, when you got to check in your spirit about something, when you got to check in your spirit about somebody, when you got discernment, there's no manifestation necessary. If you wait for manifestation, you already been bit. Hallelujah. In this season, I don't have to understand. But if God told me not to go, I'm not going. And, and this season, if God says, no, you don't have, don't go, don't go over, there, don't have them at your house. You know, like, well, they nice. I'm not just trying to. Uh, -uh. I'm going to obey God because in past seasons, I let people in my space who could not handle me. We. We've got to discern what's happening because in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, it lets us know that there were demonic alliances brewing without Jehoshaphat knowing. By the time he knows, y'all be seated, I need to finish. I need you to scream at somebody and tell them the devil just got exposed. My discernment just got sharpened because I've been feeling a check in my spirit about some things and I'm going to start calling out stuff without apologizing. I will not let a witch live in the house with a prophet. I come to tell every witchcraft spirit that's been trying to operate in manipulation, whether in your office, whether in your house, or whether in your ministry. I need somebody to jump up and shout the blood, the blood, the blood. Buckets of blood. Buckets of blood. By the time Jehoshaphat finds out the demonic alliance has already taken place. 
the Bible says it's Moabites. It's a Moabite uh, alliance, but it's Moabites with the Ammonites and other ites, right? But, but the truth is, who are these people? Because to us, they're just these foreign nations attacking Judah. But when you look at who are the Moabites, we already know who the Israelites or the, the southern kingdom, it, uh, Judah, it, are, are the descendants of, the, of uh, Abraham. We already know who they are. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Israel, right? But who are these Moabites? Well, uh, well the Moabites are the descendant. It's in the root word. They're the descendants of Moab. Well, who is, uh, who is Moab? Moab is the son and the grandson of Lot. We'll talk about that another time. Who is Lot? Lot is the nephew of Abraham. Who are they coming against? They're coming against the descendants of Abraham. Who are the Moabites? They are the descendants of Lot, the nephew of Abraham. Hear, hear what I'm trying to say to you tonight. Some of us are fighting demons that didn't start with us. It was a portal that was opened by somebody before us. Because Abraham made a decision to bring Lot with him when God told him to get from among your kindred. The decision that was made generations ago now has created a demonic alliance against the promise. But I come to tell about 50 of you in here tonight, it didn't start with you, but it's going to close out with you. I'm declaring not another generation of my family is going to be plagued by these demonic alliances. I need somebody to cast your arrow of deliverance right now. And I'm praying not just for me, but everything that's connected to me. I'm shouting for my sons and my daughters. For my nieces and my nephews, for my first and second cousins, not another generation. The Bible says, Jehoshaphat hears this. And this is what the Lord wants to deliver some of us from tonight. He wants to, he wants to deliver us from the anxiety that's connected to potential threats. I'm talking about some of you, nothing is happening, but you're dealing with the trauma of the potential. Some of you, the worst thing that ever happened was uh, that medical doctor website. You know, oh, my head is hurting. My head is hurting. Oh. What's wrong with you when your head hurts? Brain tumor. And then we start dealing with anxiety based upon the potential threat. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, and I'm serious, God wants to deliver some of us tonight because some of us, when the phone rings after a certain time, it causes our heart to race. Because several years ago, when the phone rang at 1.30, it was connected to somebody's car accident or somebody found dead. Ah, some of us are battling the anxiety of potential threats. It ain't happened. Winston Churchill said in his last few years, he said, uh, most of my life I worried about stuff. That never actually happened. I want you to lay hands on your neighbor's shoulder and tell him anxiety is not your portion. Oh my. I declare to you in this week of fasting, God gonna break the demonic system of anxiety off of the people of God. No longer are you going to lay hands and rebuke the devil off of everybody else while you have panic attacks. Satan is a liar. Let a door slam that ain't your portion. Come on. Let the phone ring. Frustration and anxiety is not your portion. Lay hands on your own mind right now and declare anxiety is not my portion. And the Bible says Jehoshaphat 
called a corporate fast. Now, every year when we go into a shut-in in our church, every year for, for 18 years, our shut-in our church used to be 21 days. I'll live in the church during that time. I still do it to this day. And when we would do a corporate fast, people would say stuff like, well, I thought when you fasted, don't nobody supposed to know about it. <laughs> no. Yes, you're right when it's a personal fast. When it's a personal fast, the only person that needs to know about it is you. You and God. But if we're going to have a corporate fast, in order for it to be corporate, everybody needs to know about it. <laughs> and listen, Jehoshaphat called the fast. I'm telling you, something, you can fake shouting and dancing, but two things you can't fake well is giving and fasting. Because the Bible said where a man's treasure is, that's where his heart is. And that's why I'm telling you, if you cheat on a fast, you're not cheating us. You're cheating yourself. Because it don't work for you unless you come in agreement with it. Corporate fast is connected to corporate victories. I need people in my life that'll be spiritual. Now, this is why I say I'm a preacher, but I don't have a whole lot of preacher friends. And this ain't against none of y'all in here. Hey, really, I don't have a lot of preacher friends. I'm going to tell you why. I don't like preachers. I just happen to be one. Now, I'm not talking about y'all. I like y'all. I like y'all. But nothing is more discouraging where you try to connect with people on a spiritual level. And I'm not talking about we got to walk around and speak in tongues all the time. But I do want to have people in my life that I can have Jesus talk with. And they don't make me look crazy when I talk about Jesus. I, I need people in my life. They're going to say, all right, brother, pull it back, pull it back. Don't let me sit at the table and cuss like a sailor. Tell me your tongues and your cussing don't match. Come on, you need to. I need people in my life that's going to hide my sensitivity in God. Not let me sit in the office and talk about whose breast was big and whose butt was. Y'all not talking to me there. I need spiritual. Program. Come on, musicians. Yeah, it's good to hear. Oh, let me see that chord. Dude. But can we have some spiritual talk? Because I need to know that if I ever go to battle, I got somebody that can cover my back. I need to know if I get a cancer diagnosis, if I can really call you and you got power with God. I need somebody that they understand. If I said, meet me at the church, I need to get on my face before God. I just need to know if I got some spiritual people with me. Oh, I laugh better than anybody laugh. I can crack jokes more than anybody. But I need to know, do you got power with God? Because I'm dealing with some real demons. I mean, I'm telling you, Bishop, you were, you were so kind to say what you said to me. And the preacher said it last night. And he said, oh, you're the face. You're the face. The preacher said that to me in Texas last night. It was so nice of him. And then you're going to look at me and say, tonight, yo, your name is in the wind. That was so nice. And can I tell you, I can't stand none of it. And I know, your, I know your heart is right. I know you mean right for me. But all I hear is now I'm on a target. I'm on a target board. That's all I hear. I'm sorry. When y'all say, oh, God, oh. Look at Bishop Younger. He booked. Is that, is that what you call it? Huh. Is that what you call booked? I, I see my picture. I see my face on a target. I see, I see people with guns pointed in my direction. And they just waiting for bullets. That's what I, So I need to have people in my inner circle that's not so impressed by me that they don't know how to cover me. Ooh, I need people. I need people that, that they're not trying to be my buddy and my best friend. They're not trying to be my adjutant or my agitator. And they may not ever carry my Bible on my bag. But if God wake them up at 2 o'clock in the morning, they'll get between the porch and the altar and say, uh-uh, not him or you won't have him. I need somebody to know how to push back the forces of darkness. It's called corporate prayer. He said, we're coming up against this together. Everybody going to fast. Everybody going to pray. Glory be to God. I need spiritual people in my life. I don't need you just to be gifted. I need you to be spiritual. I need you to look at some people and you'll tell them, I need spiritual people around me. 
I, I, I need some people that can talk spiritual language. Oh, oh, I need some people that can sit with me. We could be laughing and talking one second, and all of a sudden that thing can turn. Oh, my, 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 my. Scream at somebody, spirit to tell them, I get it. I get it. I can be walking in my house, and all of a sudden I can go up in the Holy Ghost. I get it. I get it. I know y'all think it's crazy, but I can be driving in my car, and all of a sudden the tears start coming down my face. Somebody shout, I get it. I need people that when we call corporate fast, they say, oh, I get it. You know, Lord already spoke that to me the other night. <sighs> corporate fast. And they started praying and fasting. Everybody started praying and fasting. Until the Bible says, not Isaiah, not Jeremiah, Jehaziel. He don't have a literary book. And I'm coming to tell you, this is the hour. You got to be very careful how you handle people in this hour. Be careful how you handle people who you think they don't matter. I'm talking to some of you nasty folk that will overlook ushers. You almost push somebody's assistant to the side because you need to talk to the bishop. You don't know who you pushing to the side because a person you pushing to the side may have the gift of healing. Hallelujah. They may be able to lay hands on you and get the cancer cells out of your body. You better be careful how you handle because God, this is the hour where God is raising up Jehaziels. People you ain't never heard of before. Oh, I feel the Lord here. I come to tell somebody who feel like you've been hidden. You feel like you've been stuck. God told me to tell you, you have not been stuck. You have been preserved. Oh, I hear the sound of Mordecai talking to me right now. And Mordecai told me to tell you, Hadassah, he has brought you into the kingdom. Shabbat, for such a time as this. I need you to run over to somebody and tell them God is about to reveal you. God is about to reveal you. You have felt overlooked, but God is putting a word in your mouth. There's a word in your mouth for a people. There's a word in your mouth for a nation. Scream at somebody tell them he's going to reveal you. He's going to reintroduce. I'm going to give you an opportunity to praise him, and some of you won't praise him. I told you 5784. It's the year of a closed door. Praise him. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. I said praise him for the closed door because you almost went in the wrong one. Praise him for the closed door because you almost got caught up in the wrong room. Ed and Jehaziel and Anaya. Prophet Koab, feel the Lord here. And Jehaziel, Jehaziel says, uh, you, won't, uh, you won't have to fight in this. You won't have to fight in this battle. You won't, you won't have to fight in this battle. Because this is what's going to get ready to happen. Lift your hands and receive it. God, during this week of fasting and praying, God is going to give us a download of strategy. A download of strategy. No, no, no more just a feeling. He's getting ready to download to us information. As a matter of fact, there's a grace of negotiations that's about to hit some of you in this room. Oh, man, la, 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 hey, he's about to give you the language of negotiating. Hey, man, la, 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 Somebody going to show up for a job interview and the interviewer is going to be taken back because you're going to have, hey, God going to give you such a prophetic advantage. You're going to be able to speak language of the company that you did not have a foreknowledge of. Shela <sighs> Masaya. I come to declare somebody why you, when your hands went up, the price of a piece of property came down. Oh, I, uh, I want to say something, and I, 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 it's going to be something real bold, and I feel it bold in the Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm, I feel increased in my faith, and I feel it in the Lord. Uh, when, when, uh, the Lord brought it back to my spirit about somebody's anxiety in this room. I want you to just face somebody, look at them, and give them, give them eye contact, and tell them, I speak over you. For your house, there will be no premature death. You're not about to die. 
you ain't got time to die. Apostle Campbell says you got too much to live. I come against any potential heart attack, any potential stroke. So the strategy, he says to them, you won't have to fight. And I can imagine Jehoshaphat said, okay, great. He said, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Hold on. What? Tomorrow? Tomorrow, go down there. Scream at somebody, tell them, you don't have to fight. But you do have to show up. I come to tell somebody who feel like lately you're about to lose your mind. I come to tell you, you don't have time to lose your mind. Because you're going to need your mind to count your money. tomorrow you got to show up to the battle you got to show up you got to show up to the battle and this is what the Lord spoke to me as I was uh, sitting on the plane delayed today trying to get here the Lord says to me that your your weapon in this season is going to be your voice I want you to pull on somebody and tell them get your voice back anytime fear get a hold of you, the first thing it does, it tries to shut down your voice. But I want you to reach over to somebody else and ask them, did you hear what I said? No. Get your voice back. For in your tongue lies the power of life and death. Come on. Get your voice back. I need you to pull on your neighbor. Said, oh neighbor, use your words. So many of us are sitting around and let light happen to us. But the Bible declared to us that when God created the world, he didn't create it with his hands. He created it with his voice. Scream at your neighbor. Said, oh neighbor. Oh, neighbor, use your words because the world you live in is the world that you create with the words that come out of your mouth. I'm going to say it one more time. I said the world you live in is the world that you create with the words that are coming out of your mouth. So what kind? What kind of world are you going to live in? I'm living in a world while I'm above and not beneath. What kind of world are you going to live in? In my world, I'm rich and not poor. Whose report will you believe? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he'll come out like a root out of a dry ground. He was wounded from my transgressions, proof for my iniquity and the chastisement of my peace was upon him and with his sight with his stripes, I am healed. Tell somebody, that's my world. I ain't got time to complain. I don't need to be around folks that want to stay discouraged. Scream at somebody and tell them, get up and leave. God, he said tomorrow. And when he said tomorrow, that's an indication that what I'm dealing with right now can't kill me in my today and, 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 and the Bible declared when they showed up they put the praises you already know this in front of the battle scrub somebody and say somebody whatever you do don't lose it I can lose my title but I can't lose my praise I can lose my car but I can't lose my praise 
some weapons about warfare are not carnal, but mighty, mighty, mighty to God to the pulling down of strongholds in this church age. Some people shout just to be shouting, but there's a group of us in here. Tell your neighbor something happens when I open my mouth. Something happens when I move my feet. Something happens when I lift my hands. Cause wow, wow, God, He inhabits the praise, the praise of His people. Somebody, somebody, you've been waiting for a long time, and Paul declared. After you suffered a while, the God we serve, he'll establish you and he'll settle you. Lay hands on somebody and tell them it's already settled. Your court case is settled. The financial agreement is settled. Somebody in this room, you got a situation that's been holding up your money for about three years. But somebody shout, it's settled. The settle is connected to a settlement. But when, when, when will it happen? I pray and I fast. When is it going to happen? Lord told me to tell somebody in this room. Tomorrow. Can, can we just have, I, I tested y'all out early when I talked about being in a room full of people who are spiritual and I discern. This is a house of spiritual people. I, I can feel it in my spirit. I can, because when you meet people in the Holy Ghost, you know, you can feel that witness. You know, I, I grew up with people, they didn't have a click track to start off a praise. The saints say, hey, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? No, 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 It'll be a witness. Soul is a witness. Hallelujah. Soul is a witness. Soul is a witness. Soul is a witness. Soul. The Bible says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I pray that you are blessed by the message today. And if you want to continue to get more inspirational, motivational, and even more gospel messages, I encourage you to follow our YouTube channel or subscribe to our podcast. And today we want to give you an opportunity to partner what we're doing domestically here at our local church and what we're doing all over the world. There are ways to give. And remember, when you sow, that seed may leave your hand, but it'll never leave your life. The Bible declares to us that when we sow, seeds are connected to harvest. Well, I want you to remember that I know what it feels like to cry until you have no more tears left to cry. But after you finish crying, don't stop. Get up and keep going.